screened. Um, and I'm going to ask everybody to please stand up. We will now observe the South African national anthem, which will be played on the speakers and on the screens. So if we can take a moment, please, uh, for the South African national anthem. much. Let's all take our seats. Um, I'm going to welcome to the stage uh, Comrade Mohamed Dango, uh, who is a former ambassador and the current honorable member of the National Council of Provinces. Uh, many of you will know Uncle Mohamed um, as a senior leader in our community, as a fountain of wisdom, um, and as somebody who really does hold that moral authority. He's also joined uh, by Uncle Enver Surti, uh, who is the former Deputy Minister um, of Basic Education. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum. Good evening. Mulweni, Huyenant. And I've got three minutes left, so I can't do all the greetings. Uh, let me welcome, first of all, the leaders of the faith based organizations that are here. As I say, it, Yusuf, Mr. Christopher Peter from uh, the Via Christi community, and the people from the Tamil community. I don't know if uh, Netplay is present. Let me so, uh, welcome Sandy. Raidu, Tasnim Kola, Ellen Horowitz, and Molana Suleiman Ravat, if he's here, I've not seen him yet. Let me welcome the chairperson of the region, Mr. Dada Morewa. And importantly, let me welcome Minister Naledi Pando. Let me welcome the Premier of the province, Payanza Lesofi. Let me uh, welcome somebody from the PSA, Nazim Adam. He's gone a bit today since I first knew him. Let me welcome Fasikha Hassan, the facilitator. And let me welcome Sandy Colopin the ANC branch chair. And let me welcome all of you that are here tonight to actually protest, to show your solidarity, and to show your solidarity with the people of Palestine in this particular point in time. 
Minister, I would be amiss if I don't abuse this, posi this position tonight to advocate for my fam favorite uh, program that you initiated. The, and that program is support for UNRWA. Without UNRWA, there is no right of return for Palestinians. Without UNRWA, the records of Palestinians who live in Syria, who live in Lebanon, who live in the diaspora, and who live now in Gaza, all the records have been destroyed in Gaza, the libraries, the schools, and all of that. So my appeal is we will send out the link later for people to directly fund UNRWA uh, in this particular thing. Having abused my time, thank you very much for having me on the program. Thanking you very much for having me uh, welcome people here. And thank you very much, Deputy Minister Surti, for moving me up and down. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. The charge the affairs of the Palestinian Embassy is present with us. Thank you very much, Uncle Mohammed, and of course, Uncle Enver as well. Uh, I think it really is just beautiful to see these two old comrades supporting each other, not just uh, intangibly, but also quite tangibly together. I think let's give them both another round of applause for their lifetime commitment to the struggle. Thank you very much. Um, we're now going to take a moment for interfaith prayer. We have a number of different and a diverse group in front of us today. Um, so we're going to have prayers from the Muslim community, the Christian community, and the Tamil community as well. Um, I'm going to welcome to the stage Molana Sayed Yusuf from the Sunni Ulama Council and the Sabri Chisti uh, Society who will be doing the opening dua for us. Uncle, Uncle Inver is the designated assistant today. I love it. He's sorted. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of all those who support the universal principle of justice and human rights, and those who proudly support the efforts of our government and the ruling party, the African National Congress, and as a representative of the Sabri Chisti Society and the Sunni Ulama Council, and the community of Lanasia, I humbly welcome the Honorable Minister Naledi Pando into our town. I will commence with some verses from the Holy Quran as a prayer, verses I am sure our sister, the Honorable Minister, is familiar with, as it is evident in her approach and conduct. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. By the oath of that era of the beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Indeed, mankind is surely in loss, except those who believed and did good deeds and advised one another towards the truth and advised one another to have patience. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliki yawm al-deen, iyyaka na'abudu wa iyyaka nasta'een, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. All praises are due to Allah, the owner of all the worlds, the most gracious, 
the most merciful, the owner of the day of recompense, you alone may we worship, and from you alone may we seek help. Enable us to walk the straight path, the path of those whom you have bestowed your favor, not of those who were subjected to your anger, nor of those who went astray. Amin. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi siyyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Jazakallah very much. Uh, can I now welcome to the platform, I think it's uh, Biko, uh, Biko who is coming from the Via Christi community, who will also be providing um, a prayer and a message of solidarity as well. I'm going to dive right into the prayer. Father, we come before you today united. Those who seek you through Christ Jesus, those who seek you through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them both, and those who seek you by other names and in other forms. We bring before you today the 31,000 martyrs across Gaza and the West Bank who have joined you in Jannah, especially the 12,300 children. May they be granted eternal rest, and may those they have left behind be granted consolation and justice. We bring before you the 77,000 Palestinians from across Gaza and the West Bank who have been maimed and injured. May they be granted healing and the opportunity to lead full, free lives. I bring before you the land of Palestine. Everything from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. And I pray that it will know your peace, will know freedom, and will know abundance. We bring before you all of us here and the billions of people around the world who stand for justice, who stand for freedom, and who stand against the heresies that are settler colonialism, occupation, apartheid, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. We pray for the courage, the strength, and the means to fight these heresies with our full capacities, so never again will such atrocities be carried out and especially in any of your most holy names. I pray for the state currently referred to as Israel, that justice be dis dispensed on them so completely that never again will atrocities such as the genocide of Gaza be allowed to occur in our world ever again. Amen. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the PSA and its fraternal organizations for inviting the Via Christi Community Church to be present here today. As it has during our own liberation for struggle in South Africa, Via Christi stands in solidarity with the oppressed, and as such, stands firmly on the side of the Palestinians as they face occupation, apartheid, ethnic cleansing, settler colonialism, and genocide at the hands of the Israeli state. We'd like to thank Comrade Minister Naledi Pando for being here to engage with all of us tonight, as well as all other ministers present. I'd like to start by commending the South African government for spearheading actions against Israel no other nation would. To date, the government has taken the diplomatic approach in using its vote at the United Nations to stand with Palestine at every chance it has gotten. It has taken the legal route by referring the war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu to the ICC, and in its boldest move yet, laying charges of genocide against Israel in the highest courts on earth, the International Courts of Justice. It has taken political action by using its influence with other nations in the blocs that we are party to. Yet Israel's impunity has left those actions without the deserved response, and the killing has gone on uninterrupted. What more could be done? I think our friends over at BDS have three very good ideas of what could be done. The same ideas that prove effective in ending our own apartheid. To boycott, to divest, and to sanction. Actions that might have effect as we continue to be Israel's biggest trade partner in Africa. 
It pains me to say it, but one thing this genocide has done is to unite oppressed people the world over. And more and more, we are proving the power there is in this unity. This must continue for Palestine and for all global injustices. Solidarity with Palestine, solidarity with all oppressed people. Thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, I now want to welcome to the stage Comrade Sunny, who will be reading the message on behalf of the Tamil uh, Federation. I think all of us know uh, Uncle Sunny as a seasoned activist and a very, very passionate person, which we're about to see. Thank you very much. Amandla! Um, as for see, I said, I'm reading the message on behalf of the Progressive Tamil Federation. Uh, the Progressive Tamil Federation wishes to express its strongest possible opposition against the death and destruction that has engulfed the region of Palestine, which is overwhelmed with pain, anguish, and heartache. Palestinians in Gaza are suffering a humanitar humanitarian catastrophe. Almost 1.7 million people have been forced from their homes, and nowhere is safe. Meanwhile, the situation in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, risks boiling over. The PTM expresses our sincere condolences to the thousands of families uh, who are mourning loved ones. The PTM wishes to reaffirm international solidarity with the Palestinian people and their uh, right to live in peace. That must start with a long-term humanitarian ceasefire, unrestricted access to life-saving aid and the release of all hostages the protection of civilians, and an end to violations of international humanitarian law. We must be united in demanding an end to the occupation and the blockade of Gaza. Today and every day, let us stand in solidarity with the aspirations of the Palestinian people to achieve their rights and a future of peace, justice, security, and dignity for all. The PTM wishes to applaud the South African government, led by Minister Naledi Pando and her team, for taking the brave and unprecedented step of asking the International Court of Justice in The Hague to rule on whether the continuing violence and humanitarian tragedy unfolding in Gaza amounts to genocide. We can agree, all agree that it does. This took a lot of courage from the South African government to challenge the mighty powers of the world, notwithstanding the financial and economic implications we may face. We, may face. we stand and pray that level heads prevail and that a ceasefire is implemented without restriction with immediate effect. Amandla! Free, free, free Palestine! Ceasefire now! Let's give a big round of applause to Uncle Sunny, to Molana, and of course to the Via Christi uh, organization. Uh, for helping us open this particular event um, in a very diverse, non-racial, non-sexist, as is in the character of the ANC. So thank you very much. Now that the event is officially open, um, I must make a few acknowledgements and a few announcements. I'll start with the announcements. There are bathrooms to my right-hand side, to anyone who may not know this venue. I know quite a number of us, our families have gotten married in this venue, Willimars, you name it. I know a lot of you familiar, but for those who are not, bathrooms are on the right-hand side. Um, if you have any emergencies, we've got an ambulance on standby. Uh, we have everything we need. We've also got water, so you're in very good hands tonight. I want to acknowledge, of course, uh, the various speakers who have been aptly uh, welcomed uh, by the various speakers. I won't mention them. I think we know them, um, and I'll get to that in the second half of the program. But I want to acknowledge, of course, uh, MEC Nomantu Raluhoko. She's the MEC of Health, if you could stand up. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got the MEC of Economic Development, Tisni Mutara. Uh, we've also got the MEC of Community Safety, who's doing exactly what her job is, looking after all of us. Uh, MEC Faith Zibuko. I also want to acknowledge a number of speakers who will be on the platform today, but of course the Embassy of Palestine as well, uh, the Acting Ambassador is with us, as well as a number of other dignitaries. And if I left anyone out, my sincerest apologies, please do send me a little note 
and I'll make sure that I acknowledge everyone appropriately. I'm going to get into the important part of the evening. As you can see, there are a lot of cameras. Um, if anyone couldn't make it into the venue, I know we all packed. We are live, or we are being live streamed on ANC Gauteng. Um, you can get that on the Facebook page, the X page, um, as well as our YouTube page. We are also being covered live by Hilal TV, Radio Islam. I think we've got Newsroom Africa. If I'm I might even have Power FM. We have a number of media um, stakeholders, so thank you very much to yourselves uh, for joining us today. Let's give them a round of applause. Right. Anyone who doesn't have a seat, I see the MEC is assisting us, so we should be very good. Um, we're now going to move to a few messages of support, and just before we get into it, um, Uncle Nazim and I had a very important discussion uh, just before coming up here. And there's a significance as to why we're in Linasia today and why we wanted to start our series of programs on Palestine and the ICJ with the minister in Linasia. This is a stronghold of activism. This is a community that is deeply, deeply inbred and deeply bred into that level of activism. This is a community that many of myself as other young people have read about the level of activism in the 1980s and even before that. This was a serious thorn in the side of the apartheid regime. And it only felt right to come to a community that has historically always stood for justice. And that is why we wanted to come to the I was going to say, give yourselves a round of applause. You've already done it. Well done. But really, we wanted to thank you um, from the Lens community for constantly being that moral authority and holding up um, that mirror to our society. So thank you very much. And that is why we have come here um, today to be with you. I want to welcome to the stage uh, someone you probably all know very well. Her name is Sandy uh, If anyone doesn't know, she actually had a very um, incredible video that and viral on Palestine, and we've asked Sandy tonight um, to talk to us in terms of a support, but also because we know the power of social media and the role that it plays in our activism today. Let's welcome her with a round of applause. Before I start, I'd just like to say a special thank you to Nazim Adam and Shanaz Ismail for giving me the opportunity to be here today at this wonderful event. I'm truly humbled. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and our honorable ministers. The video that you are about to view was created by me to raise awareness around the atrocities in Gaza. I was inspired to make this video after watching a Bollywood movie entitled Bakshak, which is about human trafficking and how society turns a blind eye to the exploitation of young women. One of the songs really resonated with me with regards to the inhumane catastrophe currently unfolding in Gaza. Very loosely translated, the lyrics go, we too are responsible to some extent. We are either the voice of the crowd, or we remain tight-lipped. We have a responsibility to speak the truth. And in trying to speak my truth, I was silenced by TikTok. The video that I posted was deleted, citing that the content was graphic and shocking and goes against the community guidelines. I intended to shock to shock people into bringing about a paradigm shift about the atrocities. My intention was sadly short-lived. The lack of interest, care, and concern for the people of Palestine is tantamount to us losing our sense of humanity. Are we become devoid of empathy and compassion. The atrocities in Gaza is not a Muslim problem. It transcends all religious barriers. I am a Hindu, 
and my religion does not condone this barbaric injustice. It requires me to speak up and fight against it, and this is true for all other religions of the world. It is our collective responsibility to rise up, to raise awareness, to speak, to put pressure on our governments, to end the genocide that is being done with total impunity. We need to stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. I support the call for an immediate ceasefire now. I thank you. Thank you very much. I am getting a bit of feedback, so I'm just going to stand here because I know if I stand over there, I can't see um, this part of the, the hall. So I know you'll forgive me for standing a little bit in front of uh, the senior leadership. Uh, we do have Sandy's video, um, but we're just making sure that we don't have any technical issues uh, with the flighting. So I'll wait for their, for their heads up. Uh, but in the meanwhile, um, oh, there's no sound. Shop steward voice? Okay. I am having a challenge with the mic today. All right, how's that? Can I get someone right at the back? Can you hear me? Thumbs up, shop. There we go. There we go. Uh, let's do a little quick test also to get the energies up. Amandla! Pansi apartheid Israel Pansi! Pansi apartheid Israel Pansi! Pambili freedom Pambili! Excellent. We were just testing the sound there, but everything seems to be good. Uh, we're now going to play Sandy's video, which as she's already spoken about, was banned from TikTok and other platforms. Um, in our panel discussion a little bit later, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about the censorship that has become very clear on the Palestinian issue, but we know as all freedom-loving people, this is one of many causes um, that the Western world does not want uh, to rise up and wants to silence. With that, let's get over to, to Sandy's video.
शामिल है हम शामिल है इंसान जब सही गलत में फर्क जरा सा है ये ऐन तो ताकत का तमाशा है I know everyone is obviously quite emotional, um, quite raw. So many people um, have been saying that we're becoming desensitized, and I don't think so, especially not as South Africans. Uh, I know I'm not the only one. When we open up social media, um, it gets you every single time. Um, and the fact that you are in this hall, the fact that we are here with people um, and leaders who actively are fighting for a free Palestine, yourselves included, um, really does mean that we're doing something and we're doing whatever we can in our power to change that status quo and to bring about a ceasefire. I want to welcome to the stage uh, Tasneem Kola. She is part of Educators for Humanity. If anyone know, they have done some incredible work recently, a group of very progressive and passionate teachers, um, and I'm going to welcome Tasneem to the stage. Thank you very much. Amandla! I'm short, eh? <laughs> Educational revolutionaries, distinguished dignitaries, esteemed ministers, and honored guests. It is a privilege to stand before you today as a passionate advocate for Educators for Humanity, a movement that transcends the traditional boundaries of education and aims for transformative change. I extend my sincere gratitude to the dignitaries and ministers present, whose presence underscores the importance of our shared commitment to a brighter future. Educators for Humanity stands as a testament to the power of collective action, advocating for justice, inclusivity, and global solidarity through the lens of education. In our pursuit of these lofty goals, we have undertaken meaningful initiatives, engaging educators through thought-provoking discussions and fostering learning environments that empower learners holistically. Our vision is expansive and forward-looking. We envision a world where education becomes a powerful force not only for academic growth, but for fostering compassion, unity, and resilience. As educators, we bear the profound responsibility of shaping not just knowledgeable individuals, but compassionate global citizens. In expressing our unwavering solidarity with the Palestinian people, Educators for Humanity stands as a beacon of compassion. We unequivocally support the recent case presented before the International Court of Justice, a case that was not only watertight and factual, but resonated with the shared values of justice and human rights. South Africa's steadfast stance on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict serves as a guiding light for Educators for Humanity. 
aligned with our commitment to justice and equality. This stance inspires educators to instill in learners a sense of global awareness, critical thinking, and empathy. It is a potent tool to shape the worldview of our future leaders. As we navigate the challenges in education, let the recent success at the ICJ be our rallying point. The motivation, diligence, and unity that led to that triumph can serve as a blueprint for tackling the hurdles in our educational landscape. Let us collectively work towards a common goal, channeling our efforts in favor of our country's children. I extend a heartfelt invitation to each one of you to join us in this transformative journey. Become a torchbearer for Educators for Humanity, where your voice, passion, and dedication can contribute significantly to shaping a future where education becomes a catalyst for positive change. Together, let us navigate challenges, overcome obstacles, and build a brighter and more equitable future for our children. Viva Educators for Humanity! Viva! Viva! Thank you. Job. Thank you so much to Tasneem. It's not easy to come up in front of your whole community um, and to speak, so thank you very much. One more round of applause. Uh, before we get to our next speaker, I want to acknowledge some of our partners for tonight, some of our partner organizations. Um, I want to acknowledge the Palestine Solidarity Alliance. Uncle Nazim's here, but the whole team is as well. Thank you for the incredible work. Um, I know the PSA consistently. One day, I'll actually, I'll tell a story one day of how you guys made me man a table for hours outside some random event when I was 16. Um, and my parents told me, this is, this is activism. This is it. It's not always glamorous or sexy. Sometimes it's about manning the table right in front and making sure everybody signs the register or everybody signs the petition. So thank you very much to our young people at the front who welcomed you. Let's give them a round of applause as well. Uh, I also want to acknowledge Educators for Humanity, um, the CPF, the Community Policing Forum. You saw them as you were coming in. Uh, the Via Christi Christian Community, the Sunni Ulama Council, the Jamiatul Ulama of South Africa as well. Thank you very much. As the ANC in Gauteng, we really do thank you for your partnership in today's event. Round of applause for them. Uh, I'm now going to welcome to the stage uh, someone you may not know, uh, but who's been very pivotal in an organization called South African Jews for Free Palestine. And this is very, very important because so many people don't really understand the difference between Judaism and Zionism. And we want to make very clear that the Palestinian cause is not an anti-Semitic cause. This is a cause for freedom, this is a cause for self-determination, and we stand with the Jewish community who reject the actions of apartheid Israel. Without further ado, let's welcome Comrade Alan Howitz from the South African Jews for Free Palestine. Amandla, long live Palestine, long live. Long live. Uh, comrades, thank you for this invitation. For the past five months, we have witnessed a terrible calamity. We have witnessed catastrophe for the people of Palestine. We have seen genocide in front of us, genocide in real time. And we see that the world has largely been silent. We see that the United States, NATO, and other powers who support Zionist Israel have not flinched from sending arms, sending material support, and of course political support, where at the United Nations they have vetoed every attempt 
to stop the slaughter until we saw the South African government finally take action. And we salute our government. Long live the action against the ICJ. It has taken us many years, comrades, as activists in Palestinian solidarity since the very first Gaza Wars in 2008. We have struggled to reach our government and appeal for a stronger voice and action, particularly with BDS, boycott, disinvestment, and sanctions, to look at nonviolent ways of putting pressure on Zionist Israel. We've also tried to isolate the Zionist movement in South Africa to see that the government to see that our government stops the flow of money to Zionist Israel, stops the flow of Jewish citizens of South Africa who go to fight in Israel, and to stop the Zionist propaganda which is being put out in the Jewish educational system. Finally, we must say, the chief rabbi of South Africa, Warren Goldstein, represents the South African Orthodox Jewish community. And his voice, sadly, is the voice of rabbis who stand for fascism. And I do not say that lightly. The Israeli government today is not just supported, but directed by religious nationalists, and Warren Goldstein follows that line. And he has come out to slander the South African government and our minister. And we must take a very firm stand to stop the abuse of religion as a weapon for ethnic cleansing and genocide. Let, let me also say, comrades, we must be very honest. Palestinians are standing alone against military and political force that, that seems to be invincible. And we must also say the Arab world, the frontline states of the Arab world have been silent. We must also note that the Palestinian Authority has become a Bantustan supporting the Israeli security apparatus. Comrades, we must be honest because otherwise, the day after the guns finally seem to fall silent, the political struggle for the advancement of Palestinian liberation will have hardly begun. We urge our government, we know that steps were taken in the past, to bring together the Palestinian parties, to resurrect the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, to represent the entire Palestinian people, not simply balkanized in Gaza, or in the West Bank, or in Lebanon, or in Syria, or in Jordan. Our government now has credibility as never before through this action. You have raised our spirits, you have given us a direction. Now is the time for South Africa to take this political advantage forward. We represent the hope for Palestine. We may say apartheid. We may say that apartheid South Africa was defeated, but we know still today the struggle in our own country continues. And so with Palestine. Finally, comrades, we appeal to the minister to set up an advisory structure where we as solidarity groups through the South African BDS coalition can meet regularly with government to put our positions and together strategize so that we can advance freedom in Palestine and in other countries, our neighboring countries, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, Mozambique, we know the difficulties of Southern Africa. All these struggles are connected. So finally, comrades, free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. 
From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Amanda. I think Comrade Allen really dealt with that issue very well, but there's something I want to say, and I really want to commend not just Allen, but so many of those Jewish comrades, not only in South Africa and Palestine, but all over the world. You're going to help me, tech team? I'm struggling, otherwise I'm going to use all the voice. Or it will be my fees must fall voice that we're going to have to just, you know, reinforce. All right, I'll do my best. The point I wanted to make is it is not easy to stand up against injustice. And it is incredibly difficult to stand up against injustice in your own community. And I want us to give a round of applause to Comrade Allen and all those progressive Jews all over the world <laughs> who are subject to hate who are subject to cyberbullying, who are subject to injustice, because they themselves call out injustice. And we must ask ourselves the same question now. We stand up, not only for Palestine, but for locals in our own community, against even, as the Quran tells us, our own brothers, our own sisters, and our own And I want us to take inspiration from Comrade Allen and all those who actively fight injustice, not just academically, not just social media, but every single day in their lives. Thank you very much. All right, I want to check, is Molana Suleiman Ravit? Excellent. I want to welcome to the stage Molana Ravid. We all know him very well from the Jamiat al Ulama, South Africa, and we really are thankful. They are one of our partner organizations, and we're so happy to have them with us for a message of support. Jazakallah. Honorable Minister, Premier, former ministers, Ambassador, Brothers and sisters, listeners and viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to start with a question. How is it that in the age of mass media, where generally we know whatever is happening in any part of the world, how is it that in such an age, a genocide continues to take place for over five months? How is it that despite the global outrage, the widespread condemnation, the majority of the citizens of the globe taking to the streets and protesting against this genocide, that it has yet not been stopped? One of the main reasons for this is that the major powers give lip service to committing to the tenets of justice and upholding the tenets of justice. They give lip service to upholding their own agreements, their own treaties, their own resolutions, and their own covenants. As Muslims, we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, set himself apart, where in his example we see the lens to which he went to uphold his commitments and to remain true to the treaties that he signed, and that he kept to account the betraying tribes of Mecca and Medina who violated treaties and covenants. We take inspiration from a well-known statement of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he said that even if my beloved daughter Fatima was to commit a crime, she would be punished like everyone else. And in that, he was highlighting that there's no two standards of justice. There's no one standard for the elite or the powers that be and another standard for the rest. These nations that claim to be the architects of the global system, they are betraying humanity. They are betraying humanity by not upholding the tenets of justice, by not upholding these agreements, covenants, and resolutions. They use double speak about upholding the law when it suits them, and then they become vague and evasive 
when it's conducive or when it serves their own political and economic interests. So this brings me to a point where we have to pay tribute. Justice demands that when we have to be critical of the ruling party and the government in the interest of South Africans, then we do so and we will continue to do so. But justice equally demands that when acknowledgement is due, it must be given in due proportion. <laughs> Minister Pando, on behalf of the Jamiat al-Ulama South Africa, on behalf of the Muslim community, on behalf of every peace-loving and justice-seeking citizen of not only this country and this world, thank you. You, your colleagues in your cabinet, the ruling party, the president, have done not only us South Africans proud, you have shown the world the way at the time when the Palestinians have been betrayed by their own neighborly and brotherly states. <laughs> history, Allahu Akbar, history, and more importantly, the Almighty will, inshallah, judge you very favorably for this. This ICG case is significant. Yes, we know the genocide continues, but the language has started to change even in the capitals of these Western nations that shown unconditional support. It's a start only, but it's an important start. It's an important start. We are not oblivious to the realities of the agendas of the imperial forces, and we know that you have taken this morally courageous stance at great political and economic risk, but you've taken this task nonetheless. And for that, we have to once again salute you. Our hope is in this, that these nations will continue to dishonor their commitments and to break the law and to violate treaties but they will lose as long as we remain committed to the quest for peace and justice. That's the system of the Almighty, and that is what history shows us time and again. It may take a while, but justice always prevails. Let me say this in conclusion, Honorable Minister, and I want to express the sentiments of the speaker before me. I know there are technicalities, I know there are legalities, but we appeal to our government, we need to fast-track the process now of holding those account to go and fight and contribute militarily or economically via our own banks to this genocide. We need to fast-track holding them legally to account. We need to, we need to look at defective policy like the so-called spy bill, which could open up the doors for legitimate activism for justice to be stifled in the name of the law. Let me say this as I conclude. I know, Honorable Minister, Premier, that we are in election season, and we make an appeal to the ruling party and to the government that lead us in upholding the principles of justice here in South Africa as well. By becoming true servants of the people, by rooting out corruption and incompetence from your own ranks, and by speeding up the process. And by speeding up the process, Honorable Minister, for ensuring a better life for all South Africans 30 years after democracy. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah to Molana Suleiman Rawat. Uh, for those who don't know in the crowd, uh, when someone says takbir, it's a call, and the response is Allahu Akbar, that means Allah or God is great. There's only one God, and we pray to the same God in different ways, but it is a call uh, to the Almighty um, to really not just only bless the occasion, but when we are fighting for justice, we always call on the Almighty, um, and that is a key tenant of our Islam. So thank you very much, Molana, for reminding us um, of what our duty is um, as a Muslim. Just before I hand over, we're getting to the interesting part of the evening. We're very close. So you're going to hear the minister in just a moment. Um, for those who aren't join us, I'm reminding you, you can tune in on a live stream on the ANC Gauteng page, on various social media platforms, including YouTube, 
Facebook and X. You also are encouraged to take pictures. We've got different banners. You can see all around here. I'll speak to some of the frames in just a few minutes. Um, but we really are encouraging you take pictures, take videos, post them on social media. Use the hashtag ceasefire now. Use the various hashtags of the ICJ. We need to get our voices out there. We need to continue the Palestinian struggle in that way. So thank you very much. And of course, we are live on Hilal TV. We are live on Radio Islam, and we are live on a number of different um, media platforms. So thank you very much uh, for that. I'm now going to hand over to the chairperson um, of the ANC region of Greater Johannesburg. He is also the MMC, that is the member of the Mayoral Committee um, for Finance, um, and that is Comrade Dada Morero. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay, good evening. San Bonan. Jumela. Uh, you want me to start by asking you to pay your rates and taxes before the discussion. <laughs> Or should I confirm my talk to Palestine today and leave you alone with your municipal debt? <laughs> and if you don't pay by tomorrow, I will be cutting you off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been given a very short task to perform today. And my task is really to introduce those that will be talking to us on our topic, which is basically a dialogue with our minister and, of course, the provincial premier of Gauteng and discussing matters around international solidarity and the International Court of Justice case, uh, which South Africa successfully presented uh, against the genocide by the apartheid Israeli state. So our panel today will be, of course, constituted by, or it will consist of our minister, uh, Naledi Pando, uh, our minister responsible for international relations and cooperation. Uh, uh, Naledi will also talk and touch on the significance of the ICJ. Uh, she will also touch on explaining the processes of the International Court of Justice and of course, what is the attitude and the views of the ANC in relation to the two-state solution and uh, generally, what is the view of the ANC on uh, the question, the Palestinian question. Our Premier, Panyaza Lissoufi, is also part of the panel. He will also touch on the role of the ANC uh, on matters of international solidarity and how we as the ANC are setting up structures to support solidarity movements, including issues of Western Sahara, uh, Cuba, Sudan, and Eswatin. So those are some of the issues that the Premier will touch on. And of course, we also have Nazim Adam, uh, who will then touch on the international solidarity movements, what is their role, what are they doing currently to support the Palestinian question, and what is the role of BDS and all other Palestinian support movements. Then, of course, we do have uh, our Fasia, our honorable member who did not even introduce herself. Uh, her name is Fasia. She just got married not so long ago, uh, so she's a newlywed. Uh, uh, I'm told now she can cook pap uh, and, and poo too, so she, she's doing very well. Uh, so she will then be facilitating the discussion. 
But over and above, it's important that we also acknowledge the work that has been done by Comrade Craig and Comrade Tanya in helping us working together with the committees here to put this event on behalf of the ANC. <clears throat> And of course, the local branch of the ANC, uh, Comrade uh, Sandy Colapen, will also be doing the vote of thanks today. And I see the secretary of the branch of the ANC is also amongst us and taking photos, uh, Comrade Chris Masango. Now, our program will then unfold in that fashion. And we'll then I'll be allowing the speakers, the minister will start followed by Premier, and then it will be Nazim, and Fasia will be responsible for facilitating the discussion. I would have failed if I don't acknowledge once more my provincial leadership that is here, the beautiful ladies from the PEC, who understand the importance of standing with the people of Palestine. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, thank you. My task is complete. I will see you tomorrow when I cut you off. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>
So in terms of uh, what does it mean, the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, is the highest global court. It is one of the institutions of the United Nations body of institutions, a very significant body because it has the right to adjudicate on a wide range of matters that are set out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, in international humanitarian conventions and protocols, in a range of instruments that govern international law. And let me make it clear, what we're talking about today is international law. And I should have said, while Naledi is the one who's speaking, the leader on this issue is Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa. And I should say too, the ANC didn't support, didn't start supporting Palestine yesterday. It didn't start when we went to the ICJ. African National Congress has always stood with the people of Palestine in their struggle against oppression and injustice. It's not something new. It's not a new thing. Some people might be discovering it just today, but we have always been in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Some of our freedom fighters were trained by freedom fighters of Fatah and the Palestine Liberation Organization. And so we will not desert Palestine until freedom and their state equal with us. We will continue to support their just cause. This is a very important point. <clears throat> a second point is, as South Africa, in terms of our international policy, we believe in what is called multilateralism. We believe in a multipolar world. We don't believe in unipolarity, that there are one or two powerful governments in the world who think they can tell the rest of us what we should do. We don't support that. In our view, the premier institution of multilateralism, which should oversee our rights and our access to human rights is the United Nations and no other body. So we're very clear on multilateralism and the premier global institution for humanity, the UN. We are against establishing institutions that displace the United Nations. We're against unilateral sanctions by one powerful country against countries of the world without recourse to the United Nations, which should be the one that sets sanctions. So I want to make these things very clear. This is a difficult world we're grappling with. It's a global set of challenges that all of us have to understand and engage with. So we said, as government, we cannot, as South Africa, that came through the struggle against apartheid, tolerate what is being done to the people of Palestine. We had at that time already observed for over a month the murder of children, of women, of old men, of youths, and we said we can't sit silently by. What is available to us? We were one of the first countries in partnership with gift of the givers to send aid through Egypt to the suffering people of Gaza. <clears throat> Some of our aid got through, but I know a large amount of our aid is still stuck at the Rafa border because Israel is not allowing it in. So we are now going to approach others to ensure that we are able to get that aid in. But we thought, as government, let us test the most challenging international instrument to see whether it would act in terms of our case against Israel. I want to 
confirm to you, the decision to go to the ICJ was taken by the cabinet of the Republic of South Africa. It was a government decision. We had had many, many people indicating government needs to do something, government must act, and in fact, we'd already referred Premier Netanyahu to the ICC for the ICC to actually investigate the conduct of the government of Israel and to do as they did with President Putin and issue a warrant for Prime Minister Netanyahu. We are still waiting for that to happen. But once we presented the memo to our cabinet, the cabinet immediately agreed that we must go to the ICJ in terms of the Convention on the Crime and Punishment of Genocide. So, following the decision of 8th December, we asked everyone in cabinet to say nothing and to leave it to Durko and Justice to do the work first. Because we know, you know, when there are leaks, then it gets to other people and they put all kinds of barriers in your ability to act. So, alhamdulillah, everybody was quiet and never spoke about it. <laughs> I must confess that one day I was in the Boer Cup at a meeting of our Muslim community in the Boer Cup. And there were some ladies who were very revolutionary. I'm sure they are BDS members because BDS is revolutionary. And they were shouting at me, Naledi, action, Naledi, action. And this was after the cabinet meeting. And I knew in my heart that we were preparing, but I couldn't defend the government. I, there was nothing I could say, because I told everybody, let's keep quiet till we're ready. So I took the ladies, they punched a bit and everything, and I just knew in my heart, and I was saying, Allah, I know you're listening, you know what we're preparing. So we worked throughout December. It was our legal team, and especially the DG of Justice, and our DG, Zane Dangle, who did the hard work. <laughs> and of course, the initiator was Minister Lamula, and the executioner is me. Uh, so, uh, so we were working throughout December, but the papers are prepared by lawyers because it's a court case. Uh, all I did was they would send something, and I say you missed out and <laughs> you didn't spell this properly, and so on. But. Uh, we, we got the documents done, then we sent them to our principal, the president of the ANC, President Ramaphosa. He took a few days and I was getting worried because there's a deadline, so I kept sending him SMSs. President, we need the document, we've got to finalize it. I have to send it in by such and such date in December. Fortunately, Zain Dango is Muslim and myself, so we could spend December doing that. So we were able to work on it, and 29th of December, on the date of the deadline, we sent it in. Importance is, one, you're approaching a global international institution. Very important. So what does it do? What you table before it is tabled before the world. It's tabled before the world. When we sat there in The Hague, the feeling in my heart was for the first time, Israel's impunity is visible to the world. <laughs> so the importance was the issues related to our belief that genocide is being committed, those issues and what genocide means were on the table, described by our legal team. You would have seen with the Israeli legal team, they couldn't respond to those issues. We tabled all the matters, 
And of course, it's a court case. We don't want to ruin our court case. But here's the process. We had to wait for their decision. We wanted an urgent decision on provisional measures only. Not on the genocide, because you don't deal with it quickly. It's a whole process. But on the provisional measures, we wanted the court to say, stop this killing. Make sure aid gets in. And all the nine that we asked for, they granted seven of the nine. And we, we feel vindicated, primarily because in Israel's case, its responding case, one, they said they have no dispute with South Africa. We have a dispute with them. <laughs> they said they don't have a dispute, we don't have a dispute, and therefore, in terms of the convention, we cannot bring a case. But we had written to them to say we are going to the ICJ and what the reasons are. And they unfortunately wrote back to us saying they disagree. So there was a dispute. And the court said there's a dispute. You're shaking your head. You disagree. I'm talking facts, not making it up. The gentleman is going like this. So the second thing was the issue of genocide, because it's a very serious allegation to make. To commit genocide is a very serious matter. And so the court has to consider all the issues extremely carefully. Hence, the final decision is not made immediately. But what the court does, they look at what you have submitted, and they make a decision on what they call plausibility. Is it plausible that genocide is indeed underway, as South Africa claims? So when we were in the court, the first part of their statement was accepting there's a dispute. The third paragraph, and they, you know, they took long, you know, lawyers reading all their things. But when they came to the third paragraph, they then spoke to the matters relevant to genocide and the sections we had quoted of the convention. And they said they find that we'd got dispute, we got plausibility, and the lawyers were breaking my hands by that time <laughs> because they knew that the court was taking our case seriously. So the important, uh, uh, importance of this case is first, you're with a global international body. And when you have a global institution, for all countries, whether they agree with you or not, to reject what that court says places you in a very invidious position. Remember as well that if you are associated with the commitment of genocide, the committing of genocide, you yourself become a party of the guilty parties. This is why you would see that certain leaders are now being sent out, powerful leaders. After telling us we are ridiculous in the public domain, they're now saying Israel must respect the international court. Now, they've changed because next thing you are implicated and you have to come before the court. So that is, in, in sum, that is the importance. Then wh where do we go from here? All we were dealing with in initially is do we have a case and can we have provisional measures? You know that Israel has ignored the provisional measures. They've submitted the report. That's the only part they've acted on. We are preparing a response to their report. I don't have to tell you what it is. You can guess uh, what's happening there. But the court has reiterated that Israel has a legal obligation as a state party to the convention to act on what the court has set out. So the legal points are established. We're now going to move, once the court gives us a date, to what is called the merits of the case. Comrade Anva would be explaining this much better than I. The merits would go into the key issues of whether there is indeed a genocide. 
And it's clear. If I deny you food, if I deny you water, if I deny you energy, my intention is to kill you. If I tell you move to point B, and as you move, I kill you, my intention is to wipe you out. If you move to point B, then I tell you back to point A, and I kill you as you move, my intention is genocide. So for the African National Congress, this is a clear issue of an abuse of human rights, and it's something that we cannot accept or tolerate, and as the African National Congress and this government, we are resolute that we will continue to pursue this case. And of course, if you, as the people of South Africa, do something very odd, like not ensuring the ANC as a majority, we as the ANC, we're going to pursue the case, but the government won't. So make sure, make sure you vote. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Minister. I think we all a lot more clear on how the process is going to work. I'm going to break a little bit with protocol. I'm going to come to you in a moment, uh, Premier. But I actually want to link something that's very important in terms of the discussion around the ICJ and solidarity and international solidarity. But I'm going to pick up, uh, Minister, from something you've just said. And I'm going to put you in a tough uh, spot here, Uncle Nazim, or Comrade Nazim. I was told to, not Uncle, I was told not to do that, sorry. Um, but what? yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to know some of your thoughts about this upcoming election, in addition to this international solidarity. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I'd be very interested to hear some of your thinking on this upcoming election. And for those who may not be able to see uh, Comrade Nazim, maybe just come a little forward yourself as well, Premier. I'm a little worried that maybe those at the back may not see your face. Premier as well, if you can come forward. Over, over to you, not uncle, Comrade Nazim. Oh. I, I think Fasia is, is worried that time is out, so she wants to jump into other issues. Um, I firstly, Minister, uh, Premier, Comrade the efforts of our government in international justice is highly commended, and you've heard that from everyone. I've just got a note now that our government is seeking additional provisional measures at the ICJ. And, and we understand that this is because of the horrors that we are witnessing every day. I must be honest, as the Palestine Solidarity Alliance in particular, but in the solidarity movement in general, we didn't hold much hope for this ICJ thing. <laughs> we thought we're going to another United Nations resolution, veto, and so forth. We Nevertheless, uh, saw it as a positive move and we encouraged it. I know from our side we had a live panel monitoring it with advocate Aslam Bawa and a few other legal people and it was really interesting and the take from a legal point of view and there was huge interest. I think at one point we had like seven or 8,000 viewers on, on our channel at, for this. And so when the minister says that Israel's impunity was being exposed, the social media, the efforts of the solidarity movement and so forth clearly uh, indicates there was great interest and hope. We had already submitted to the ICC as the PSA two Gaza dockets. So after Kass led, um, we had submitted, but at the time, Palestine was not yet a recognized uh, state within the United Nations, even as, um, uh, as it is now. And, and, and we know that that status has to be where they are fully fledged, recognized, independent state. That's the objective. So the ICC had rejected our, our cases. We, in 2021, had lodged the Al-Aqsa docket. This docket is placed at our NPA, the National Prosecuting Authority. And one of the things as we prepared for tonight was to bring to government the fact that the National Prosecuting Authority of our country 
is not serious when it comes to international justice. They are not acting and they are not moving. We have presented in the Gaza dockets and now again a list of South Africans serving in the Israeli Genocidal Defense Force. We want them to be prosecuted. But what I want to say is that solidarity work is not easy work. It took us, and that's the PSA formed after the World Conference Against Racism in Durban. We formed a little organization. We did a few legal cases. We did lots of other work. We got to this point where there was movement, and we found this at the ICJ. We were there very, very, very positively surprised when the ICJ gave the positive ruling of plausibility. And they did it with rugby scores, 14 to 2, and so forth. So political shifting requires our continuous effort. Coming to your question, Fasia, we are living in a country where there are mixed communities, mixed politics, and so forth. But what we are finding is that in 30 years, we have not changed the revolutionary culture to be that of all South Africans. The culture that we grew up with in our struggle for justice, for equality, for freedom, and most importantly, the culture of anti-racism has not permeated within our society. I think that if we had taken those values, values that gave character to the people that have led our movement, we would have not seen the kind of uh, support that certain political parties give for Israel. We would not see the hypocrisy of a certain Stianese and flying to Ukraine, but not flying to Gaza. So, so the, the fact that if it is someone of fair skin that is suffering, that you should feel more. But when it's someone who is of a darker skin and they are suffering, they deserve it. Is a racist value system that still permeates much of our society. And we need to challenge that racism. I think that for me was the greatest victory of the ICJ and the work that we did here is to say that the statement of Nelson Mandela that South Africa cannot be truly free until Palestine free is free is now far more relevant because it has opened the minds and the hearts and the souls of South Africans to what freedom really means, what justice really means. And Palestine has awakened the world to see what is the difference between justice and injustice. They have stirred the hornet's nest on October 7th and before that because the resistance didn't start on October 7th. We can talk about that a little later, because I think that is important. There is a sense, you know, I, we, we have a lot of Palestinians we've been supporting, uh, who have come back, um, who have been living in South Africa, um, and we ask, you know, I mean, what's your feelings about Hamas? You're seeing everyone is playing Hamas, why don't they release the hostages? Now there's this massacre and destruction. And every Palestinian's answer is the same. Hamas has given us our dignity. So while the West will spin a story and it's now exposed the New York Times for its lies, we know that on October 7th, which no one wants to talk about, is that three military bases were attacked. It was a military operation. One base. No one was supposed to know it exists. It's a military intelligence base. So the right to resistance, we in Lens know very well 
we have been part of a struggle where we have had people from our community serve in Umkonto where Siswe. We even lost comrades, Yusuf and Prakash, my close comrades, who passed away while on an operation. We understand resistance and the right to resistance. And we applaud the resistance. And we must be clear, it is not only Hamas that's resisting. All the resistance organizations from PFLP to Fatah to Islamic Jihad are all, all standing in defense of Gaza. And when we ask ourselves, why? Why did Hamas attack? They had no other choice. They were living under a medieval siege for over 17 years where even the amount of calories per person was being rationed to enter Gaza. We know as the PSA, because we are part of the Freedom Flotilla Coalition, that when we attempted to break that siege, they attacked the Mavi Mamra, a humanitarian aid convoy. Let me just tell you that we are going to sail again this year. And we are going to sail with an international community and we are going to break the siege. We are going to break the siege because we, the atrocities and the inhumanity can no longer be allowed to continue. Masjid al-Aqsa The Zionist Orthodox Jewish uh, fascists, as Ellen referred to them, were preparing to shut it to all the Muslims and take it to build their temple. If you look at the statements of Ben Gavir and others, that was on the cards. That's why we also already had the Al-Aqsa docket in 2021. So you've got a siege. You're hungry, Masjid al-Aqsa is under threat, and there was already intelligence information of the displacement and relocation of all of Gaza to the Sinai. So do you sit back? You resist. You have to. And that is the dignity that comes with standing for freedom, justice, and equality. Who do we vote for? We've debated this in the solidarity. But we are not here to campaign for any particular political party. Except to say, you don't vote for those political parties who are narrow nationalistic, who are racist, who support Zionism unconditionally, and give impu impunity. We do not vote, and I will say it, for the DA. But you also know that's not a new thing. We've always opposed the DA. You do not vote for the PA. You do not vote for the ACDP. And I don't even know those others because they're insignificant. When you vote, and we, I thought hard about this because we're all in the dilemma, right? Who do we vote for? Now you must understand my mother was an ANC counselor. I, <laughs> I was active in the movement. My brother was part of Umkonto. We come from the ANC, okay. yet I was at a dilemma. And I realized that when it comes to election fever, there's a lot of emotion. But for this election, we have to vote conscientiously in, in a rational and reasoned way, which you have to figure out for yourself. But I can tell you that certain political parties, should they get the upper hand in this country, they will take South Africa back 20 years.
Uh, thanks, thanks very much, Comrade Nazim. Um, I can say it. Vote ANC. I, I, I uh, we'll, want we'll get to there. say, yeah, I, I think I must say I have no doubt I'm voting ANC. Um, Premier, thank, thank you, Comrade Nazim, for that, and I think also for that honesty. Uh, I don't think we as the ANC are looking for blind endorsement. Yeah. You know, we want to work with our communities and our organizations, yeah. Yeah. so that's very important. <laughs> Premier, quite enough, enough has been said. Um, I'm interested on the role of the ANC around, sure, international solidarity, but let me, let me give you a difficult one. So a lot of the naysayers, I don't know how many of them are in the room, they'll say, well, how come you're taking Palestine issues or rather taking Israel to the ICJ? Uh, supporting Cuba, et cetera, et cetera. What about here? What about our own backyard? What are we doing about that? Amanda! Hey. Amanda! Hey. Long live the untimed spirit of Yasa Arafat. Long live! Hey. Amanda! Hey. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Fasia. Comrade Fasia, truly appreciate that. Uh, Comrade Minister, now, lady, if this was not said, I want you to say it here. Minister and your team, you have no idea what you have done for all of us. It's not for now, it's not for tomorrow, it's forever that generations and generations and generations will note this important act of bravery as an act that is unmatched and as an act that must be supported. Thank you so much, Minister. The hard work is appreciated, but besides that, Minister, we ourselves are a product of solidarity. Indeed. We ourselves are a product of solidarity, support, and international support. We have demonstrated one point and one point only, that we are not selfish. If it was another country or another organization or another formation, we will say we have our freedom, we don't care about the freedom of other people. And the mere fact we are standing here, we are standing now, we want to send a very strong message that betrayal is not an option in our character and forever will defend those that stand with us and support us. And history is clear. When all activists are united, nothing defeats us. History is clear. When all solidarity movements are united, no one can defeat us. History is very clear that if we pull together there is no enemy that can stand in front of us. So on this account, I want to assure everyone, on this account, we want to assure you here, as the African National Congress in this province, as the African National Congress nationally, as government in this particular province, we stand with the people of Palestine come whatever weather, we will remain resolute, we will remain firm, and we will not get tired to campaign for a free Palestine. But we'll be naive, we'll be naive not to expect those that are angered by our position not to fight back. We'll be naive not to expect those that are angered our position not to support those that oppose us. You can see already all political parties that have taken a stand against us, all their posters are up, all the resources they've received, it's quite clear that Israel and other countries are sponsoring a possible regime change in this particular country because they fear a democratic state. They don't know in the process that they're exposing themselves, that democracy is not something that they believe in, and that democracy is not something that they will support. 
But regardless of those provocations, regardless of whatever that they are doing, we are proud as this government that the decision that we have taken to support Palestine, whatever price we will pay, we are prepared to pay that price. And we will never be cowards and cowardice will never be our language, regardless of the pain that we will pay and regardless of the price that we will get. So I'm told that, and this is the message, I'm glad that the acting ambassador is here. I'm told, minister, like baits, that when a one bait, you shoot a bait on a lake, all other baits, they start to surrender, to, to surround the limping bait so that the enemy must not see which bait is actually limping. So to the people of Palestine, we will limp with you so that no one can see that the people of Palestine are going through pain and are going through difficulties. So on the matter of saying we are choosing Palestine, not South Africans, that South Africans are going through difficulties, I can tell you, even if we have done anything good, if somebody hates you, regardless of what you do, they will find an excuse to try to discredit you because they don't have a good story to defeat it. They don't have a good story and facts to tip counter the argument that we are putting. But South Africans must be assured. All the four challenges that we are facing in this particular province in particular, we are ready to tackle them. When we took over in this particular province, there were many electricity generation stations that were collapsed by previous regimes in this province. Minister and the citizens of this area, we are bringing all those power generation. The most difficult thing that we are facing in this particular province called load shading, we are putting mechanism to ensure that we resolve all those particular problems in our province. It's not easy, but we are prepared to invest not only the resources, but the necessary skills to bring all those particular powers. And the first power is coming on the 1st of April, where we are bringing almost 100 megawatts to the grid in our province as we take load shedding in this particular province. The second issue, which is very important on the basis that we've raised, let's be honest, good people. This province of ours, the way it's so beautiful, if we can't stand together on this enemy number one, we will kiss this beautiful province of ours goodbye. The levels of crime and the level of lawlessness in our province must come to a dead standstill and we must put all the resources to fight crime in our province. I said it to the minister, you tell us what we want to will fund you. I said to the minister of police, days of using knob keys to chase criminals are over. We need the highest form of intelligence and the highest form of technology to fight crime. So with all those things, Comrade Fasia, I'm trying to respond to a question to say, we will assist people of Palestine, we'll never neglect our responsibilities as government in our province, but that does not mean we should have a blind eye when people are suffering in any part of the globe, whether it's Eswatini, whether it's Cuba, as South Africa will stand firm and we want to thank all those solidarity movement. We want to thank all those that are activists on this particular front. Count on us. And when we are together, no one, and I mean it, no one can defeat us. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, Premier, also for your honesty. Um, you know, one of the things we're about to open up to the floor uh, that I also want us to talk about, because time is running out, I'll only be able to take a few hands, but I want us to also engage on this thing of media manipulation. Um, because it comes out on the issue of Palestine. Uh, we know there was that uh, fake news around the beheaded babies and that kind of thing. But also it can come out in election manipulation of the media. Um, and I, I want us as a community and as a society to discuss that because what's different now um, is that we all have smartphones. Yeah. We're able to research, we're able to really come up um, with reasoning why things should or shouldn't be. Um, so I really want us to also think about that. Let's open up to the floor. I know we didn't cover everything, but I'll give us an opportunity in response to some of the questions um, to also have those, uh, have those points put across. Okay, I'm gonna have to stand up. I have a team. Uh, Comrade Firoza and Comrade Greg, who I now can't see, are helping us should identify. You Thank you so much. So I'm going to, uh, I I've got a lot of hands here. I'm going to take Comrade Hassan first, Comrade Tokoza second, and then. Let, yeah, let's let's take gonna, about three or four for now, because I'm worried so I've got about two the on this side, I've got that three. I've got uh, Comrade Suli on this side, four, and Uncle Chami, five. So that's two, two, and one for now. So I'm going to give Comrade Hassan first. Please keep your, sh your questions short. Don't give sermons, don't give lectures, just a question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Firoza. Yeah, I'm uh, active in, in uh, media, worked with civil society. My name is Hassan Logat. Um, I've tried to fight uh, some of the newspapers, in particular Daily Maverick and The Citizen, on their reporting on both Cuba as well as, uh, well, they didn't publish my, my article, but the allegation, racist allegation, that uh, South Africans can't think for themselves. This uh, case was sponsored by Iran. Mm -hmm. I heard the minister's response, but I, I, I really want to know, so th my first question is, uh, some of these newspapers linked to the Race Relations Institute, the Brenters Foundation, have to be vigorously engaged. But I also have looked at your manifesto. Uh, it seems two parties. The one by the former Youth League member and the other by the ANC covers international issues. Are you going to call for an all-party debate on Palestine? If we can also just be brief for our questions. I know because I'm trying to get more people in. The more brief you are, the more voices we can hear. Thank you. Okay. Good, good evening, all. I'm, I'm a recently retired trade unionist and the beneficiary of international solidarity. I just want to ask, when are we going to stop trading with Israel? Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I'm in front of the speaker. Okay. Uh, I just, just on those good ladies' comment, I just want to ma make a very brief comment. And I've uh, sent messages to some of the PSA members regarding this issue and addressing the people of Lanasia today. Uh, very saddenly, say that the people of Lanasia have forsaken the people of, not, not all the people, some of the people of Lanasia have forsaken the people of Gaza. If you go to all the super, super rich supermarkets, you find clover products full up. Where are we going to take clover out of Lanasia? When are we going to take the ZZ tomatoes out of Lanasia? Are we going to break our fast? The fast that we're going to keep fasting, or are we going to break those fast with the blood of the people of Palestine? So the people of Lanasia, BDS, please, we need to start this campaign and get these shops. If we have to close the doors, let's close the doors. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, just uh, I want to say that today South Africa is writing Horrible Chapter of the History. 
uh, on behalf of the Palestinian people, leadership, thousands of martyrs, we thank uh, His Excellency President Sar Ramaphosa, the brave Minister uh, uh, Nalidi Bandor, Minister uh, Lamola, uh, the soldier of. I am here to speak on behalf of the Palestinian people all. I am a representative of the Palestinian people. Okay, we represent our people here. No, 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 Palestine. We represent Palestine. No, we, we thank Palestine. Aman la! Aman la! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, we, comrades. Lastly, lastly. Come, hold on, hold on, hold on. Comrades, friends, we allow all voices. If you want to say something, we will give you a chance to say. Do not block someone from speaking while they are speaking. Thank you. Uh, lastly, we salute all the a brave soldier of South Africa who stood in the international court. We all Palestinian people today confirm that strong ANC and alliance is a strong South Africa, a strong South Africa is a strong Palestine and international solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's be cognizant of time because I want the minister to respond and I think we also want to hear a few more thoughts from the minister. We're very privileged to have it tonight. So I think one or two more questions and then I'd like to um, engage with minister. Yeah. My name is Yusuf Saluji. I was a former ANC councillor 1995 to 2000 in Indonesia. The question I, I wish to pose and ask is, firstly, firstly, genociders, countries that support genociders cannot be in the United Nations Security Council. They have to be ousted. The question I am very hurt about is that the present United Nations, as it is constituted, is not just. It's not rendering out peace to the world at all. I want your comment on that. And how do we change the United Nations? That is the first question. The second one I'm asking is this. We've sent 2,000 troops to Congo to pr promote peace there. Can we get international troops to go to assist the people of Palestine? It is a thing that is directly and urgently needed. Thank you. All right, let's take the last question. I really yeah. want to hear from the minister and the team. Okay. Okay, we've got one last question from the media. I think that's a lot. we've just got one more question for the media, and I'm going to give this comrade one, and then. Thank you very much, Minister. I'll be brief. It's concerning betrayal. Many countries were complicit and in complacent, including those which stood with Palestine. On the other hand, South Africa has the courage to take the matter to the ICG. Did the South African government consider the existential threat posed by those supporting Israel? What is your opinion with regards to those who support the genocide in the Gaza locally, internationally, including South African citizens participating in the genocidal war? Thank you. Let's take that very last one, one last please. One. I want us to get enough time for response as well. Murat Özgür Güven, the Anadolu Agency, Turkish Media. Uh, my question is, are you satisfied with the implementation of ICG decisions? And does Israel implement ICG decisions already? And how do you evaluate the deployment of international forces to ensure a ceasefire in Palestine? All right, thank you very much. Let's start with the minister. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, thank you very much uh, for, for the questions. I just want to say that uh, it's always important to listen to each other. It's a, a, a skill 
and an important courtesy, particularly to strangers. Because part of what we are trying to do as South Africans is both to show the practice of democracy, but also the embrace of all. And we don't have the perfect answers as South Africa. We've made many mistakes, all of us, not just the government. I know it's nice to beat up the government, but we are all South Africans, and not all of us are perfect. So I, I do really want us to appreciate the need to really ensure that everybody, whether we agree with each other or not, they are welcome and we're ready to have a discussion with them. I, I would like to uh, begin, uh, if you'll allow, uh, with the comments Molana Suleiman Rawat made. Uh, I don't know if Molana is still here. He's gone, or maybe you'll share it with him. Molana is right. Not all that we wanted to achieve as a new democracy has been achieved in the 30 years. But a great deal of the legacy we've inherited has been addressed. And I think it is improbable to imagine that in 30 years we would come overcome all the legacy of apartheid. I don't think it's possible. There's no nation which experienced the level of oppression, harm, and racism that could ever address all social and economic ills in 30 years. It's just impossible. And so I do think it's important that we always look at the record of what has been done. Yes, indeed, point out the imperfections. And yes, I agree with Molana Rawat, call on government and any party that is in power that it must fight and eradicate corruption. But I challenge the notion that everybody in the ANC is corrupt. I'm not corrupt, I've got integrity. No, I'm not corrupt. And I refuse to be labeled because I belong to the African National Congress. I could keep you here all night and tell you the positive things I've done in the different portfolios I've held, and I've never stolen one penny of public money. I also want to say to you, and particularly to my comrade, Hassan Logat, I've been looking for you, wondering where you are. I'm so glad to see you are here. And I thank you for the challenge to the media. One of the things I've been communicating on the question of the unjust cruelty practice against Palestinian people is in 2021, when we had uh, COVID, one journalist broke the lockdown rules and ran into a group of police who arrested him correctly for breaking the law and kept him in a cell overnight. I got 202 letters from different press, organizations, individual media. Over 100 journalists in Palestine have been killed. There's silence. <laughs> silence. So I think it's important what you're doing to challenge the false reporting in the media. When we took the case to the ICJ, the Financial Mail had a, co a, a column which said the Pando problem and that I don't know foreign policy. All sorts of insults were leveled against me by the very paper you've referred to which many people thought was a radical new introduction of media. But actually, it's become a mouthpiece of certain organizations and, and individuals. And we know that those that support them are busy with a regime change agenda to conservative governments and anti-liberation movements in Africa. So we must continue the challenge. We have had many debates in Parliament, even today, 
I was in the portfolio committee answering these very questions. Iran has funded you, and I'm called the legal arm of Hamas by my Prime Minister Netanyahu. <laughs> We've had these debates, but the problem we have, which I think uh, Comrade Adam spoke to so brilliantly, we don't regard each other as full human beings. Some people are human beings and others are not. For example, the injustice in Palestine is believed to have begun on October 8. It's seven decades. Seven decades. So people know the facts, but in order to continue their racist notion, they will never admit it. I've even, I think I've lost friends among foreign ministers because they say, don't you respect sovereign territory? So I said, do you respect the right of the Palestinian people to their land? And they say, we're talking about Ukraine. So I say, why is Palestine different? We've had the debates. And we, we will continue to have the debates. The latest, they're asking what the lawyers are costing government. And they say, I'm, I'm, um, my master is Iran, and Iran is paying, because I visited Iran as an envoy <coughs> of the president. Of course, nobody's my master. Partial master might be Sharif, my husband, but that's, you know, <laughs> that's me and him. Iran, we are friends with Iran. It's, they're a friend of South Africa, a partner. <laughs> On the matter of uh, the trading with Israel, well, I think I must turn the question to you. When will you stop buying Israeli-made goods? <laughs> I, I, I think it's important that you never make the assumption that a government can be an activist fully. It can do courageous things, as our government has done, but it cannot go the whole hog. The whole hog is done by civil society. Don't forget that. Don't forget that in the struggle against apartheid, we had pillars, international solidarity, armed struggle, mass mobilization. And underground. Four pillars of struggle. Are we using mass mobilization sufficiently? When I spoke at Al Quds in uh, Cape Town, I said to my brothers and sisters, why are you not picketing every day outside these embassies? The five main supporters of Israel, just 10 people would stop the genocide. Like those black sesh women, do you remember? They were always on the street corner. Stop apartheid. Imagine if every day we had a rotation and 10 of us with posters were always outside these embassies. We know who's giving arms. We know who supports Israel. Why are we not out there? It's good, you know, it's very good to be a revolutionary. I'm always being shouted at as a minister. I'm used to it. People shout. Ministers this, ANC that. Minister. You don't know the contribution that we're trying to make. I am living and breathing Palestine at the moment. <laughs> and so what we need... We need the activism to stand up. <coughs> we need ma mass mobilization. I'm not only speaking to you as a community that has a large proportion 
of the Muslim community. I'm speaking to Christian believers as well because they have a, an association of the Bible with the people of Israel. And I'm, I'm explaining to them the great books and the people of the book and why there is at the moment a struggle by the people of Palestine. You need to persuade, to educate, to change minds. You can't force belief. People must freely understand and it must be their hearts which appreciate that we cannot tolerate what is being done to the people of Palestine. We must turn hearts. So don't only speak among yourselves as Muslims. Go out there, engage others. Because people who are leaders are saying, my lady Pando is against Christians. She's a Muslim. That's why she's taking this up. She hates people of the Bible. Absolute lie. But it's the only argument they have, a falsity, to proceed with their support of impunity against a people. And we, I will stand up everywhere. You've seen me speak to the most powerful foreign ministers. And I've said before them, I said yesterday, we need to get aid into Palestine. I know how we can do it. All the countries which are powerful countries with big armies that are giving arms to Israel, they must send their soldiers to the Rafa border to escort the 700 trucks of aid into Gaza. <laughs> that matter is on the BBC now and they probably think I'm a mad woman, but I'll keep saying it. The lady said to me, Minister, surely you can't expect that to happen. So I said, if the world has a conscience, that's what must happen. It must be them who ensure we don't have dead skeletons on the street of Gaza because people are starving. And she said, will Israel allow it? And I said, will Israel shoot their biggest supporters? It's only them. The supporters of Israel have a big responsibility to address the needs of the people of Gaza. And that's what we should be saying more and more and more. Finally, it's not true to say that the Palestinian uh, Authority has sold out. I think there have been a lot of faults in them. I have said in many audiences there were many people when we were approaching a negotiations process who tried to tell us what we should negotiate and who we should negotiate with. And we told them we as the liberation movements want to speak for ourselves. We have our own ideas. So I have said all over the world when they asked me, should it be this group or that? I said, prize number one. Prize number one, the people of Palestine must decide who they want to lead them. Number two, all the factions in Palestine must sit down and talk. Because when you're united, you're a power, you're a force. If you are divided into factions, you are useless. And the issues of failures, of administration, of funding management, of the public service, those must be addressed. But I cannot agree, having worked with Minister Maliki, for example, and been with him in very difficult situations, I will not accept any allegation that he's a sellout. He isn't. He isn't. Indeed, the United Nations must change. We've been arguing for UN reform for years. The UN is not representative, it's not effective. We can see this today. 
One of the issues I believe we must address in the reform agenda is the composition of the UN Security Council to include Africa and other parts of the developing world. Asia is not represented properly there. I also believe that given the propensity of man for evil and conflict, we must have peace enforcement capacity in the United Nations. We can't rely on a debate in the Security Council. We can't rely on the P5. <clears throat> They've shown that they cannot maintain peace and security. So I think the United Nations needs to move beyond peace monitoring and have a capacity for peace enforcement. If they had it, that peace enforcement capacity would be on the ground in Palestine saving lives today. But we don't have it, and I think we should. I also think that we must ensure that this matter of the veto is reversed and we have a proper democratic way of making decisions in the United Nations. But as South Africa, we've argued that the UN should move to text-based discussions on reform. The powerful countries don't want it because they enjoy amazing hegemony at the moment. But we are pushing for it in the United Nations and we would enjoy your support in that regard. <clears throat> On the matter of the DRC, it is vital that we have the SADC mission to the DRC because you know what happens when one of our countries on the continent breaks up due to instability and violence, we'll have a large number of illegal immigrants spread all over the world and it doesn't do Africa well. So we've got to bring peace and stability to the DRC. And this is part of the significant African mandate that South Africa holds as its foreign policy. So I think government has taken the right step in this regard. <clears throat> Am I satisfied with the ICJ decision? I had said publicly on that day of the decision, I'm not totally satisfied because I wanted all our provisional measures to be agreed upon. But the majority were, and you can't have everything you want. And the fact that the ICJ has spoken positively in our case, this is a big win for South Africa, for those who support humanity and for the people of Palestine. Palestinian people have said to me, you made us visible to the world. You have made us whole, South Africa. And I thank all of you for that. I've tried. Premier, anything from you? Just, I know it's late, but we're just gonna close up. Anything there? Um, yeah. They a few things. Firstly, obviously, Clover and PSA has led this boycott, but it also links to our ongoing activism to, pr to push for uh, an end to these uh, multinationals who come into our country, invest, but have ulterior motives. We know that Milko and the Israeli bottling company was behind the buyout of Clover, South African brand. Uh, we maybe need to look and, act, and, and work our activism and lobbying to change some of that legislation. But like the minister said, that the buying power is in our hands and we have to promote the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign. Down the road here, if you turn left, there's a little fruit and veg shop called Bismillah's. Uh, 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 I forget the name, Suhail and his brother-in-law, they run the shop. And since the very first call, they've never kept clover in their, in, in their, in their little shop. This is the activism that we want, but you're right, we will go to those stores that are keeping clover. Some of them, we have approached them and they've told us they're gonna sell out what they have and they're no longer gonna store it. These are business people, we have to engage them and we want alternatives in our communities. We must make lens an apartheid-free zone. So I agree with you on that. I, the minister has spoken. Uh, sorry, guys, the floor's closed for Q&A. It's... Uh, I, I, I don't know. Can you guys sort this out for me, please? Okay. 
Oh, guys, I'm speaking. All right. So we don't all agree on everything. And I think the minister today and uh, Comrade Panyaza, you guys are like convincing us. Uh, but that was your purpose. Uh, I just want to say there are two young girls here with us in the audience who were part of the eva evacuation from Gaza. They are very shy. So Safa and Marwa, are you with us? Safa and Marwa, I know you are very shy. There are two young Palestinians who managed to come out of Gaza. There's still a lot of work and support that they need. We know they have not come with any papers, documents, and it's a difficulty to get into university, so we will be calling for some help uh, so that they can get on and move on. They are young, energetic. We know that Angela is with us, and we are with you and supporting you. I know your family, your husband is back in Gaza. I also know that Khalid, we have difficulty sorting out your children's paperwork. Uh, but as long as some of us are there, they will get an education. Uh, so we will ensure that they are in our schools and that they have every opportunity because those are the values that our democracy fought for our, and this government of the African national fought for. We must appreciate those uh, uh, human values. So with that, I want to go on to the final part. Can I lead this one, Fasiha? So we have a few gifts. You know, when you come to Lens, there's lots of gifts. Uh, I understand, and I want to just welcome Ahmad Jamal from the Egyptian community. They, and we know that a number of Islamic Brotherhood people were sentenced to death today. It's still a story in Egypt. But the community does a lot of community work in South Africa, and they want to present this certificate from the Egyptian South African community to Minister Naledi Pando. The same message, the same message of hope and dignity from the Arab community in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. We also have two books uh, by our good friend and comrade who was part of the evacuation with, uh, with his family. I know Firoza worked very hard on that. And he's written a book. It was, it was to be published before the current war, and that is uh, Decolonizing the Palestinian Mind by Comrade Haider Eid. <laughs> Take a picture, Firoza. You've Firo I must acknowledge Sister Firoza as one of those comrades who works tirelessly 24 7 for Palestine and has a day job. She's currently also working on the anti-apartheid conference that we hope to host later this year. And is the coordinator for Israeli Apartheid Week in South Africa, and also works with the International Boycott, Divestments and Sanctions Committee. She represents us on many fronts. Give Firoza a big round of applause. We, we need more Firozas to join us. The solidarity needs more activists. We would like to now welcome uh, Councillor Imran Musa, uh, the local councillor, and he has a gift and a certificate as well. Uh, his party is not on the don't vote list. <laughs> Imran is always present on all Palestinian issues, so thank you. Uh, Councillor Musa. Right. Uh, can I ask the educators for humanity and some of the PSA people to just bring these artworks to the stage for me? The artworks, you can grab one. There's a few on the other side. 
as well. Just bring it up to the front. You can stand in front, it's fine. So we've, PSA has reproduced the artworks. They will go on sale uh, to raise funds for our ambulance drive. Um, brilliant artwork. So I see Comrade Panyaza Le Sufi has pointed to this one, Suhail. So this is his gift for today. Uh, I would like to give this gift to Comrade Naledi Pando, Minister. This is the image for Israeli Apartheid Week, a powerful Palestinian woman rising from the rubble. And this is your gift. And Comrade Dada, we're going to give you a visit to Palestine. This is a very significant poster because the image... You run this one. Okay. But let me just say, one of the things that the Israelis want to do is deny the existence of Palestine. These were posters, travel posters, before 1948, when people were encouraged to visit Palestine. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to close now, Fasiha. Comrade Dada? Uh, Comrade Sende will now do the vote of thanks and thanks for everyone who has contributed. Comrade Sende. Amanda. Viva ANC Viva. Viva. Revolutionary greetings to one and all. My name is Sandy Colopin, the branch chairperson of Lanesia Central Ward 9. We would like to take this opportunity to the African National Congress for hosting our Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Relations, Minister Naledi Pando. We would like to extend our vote of thanks to the Gauteng Premier and Chairperson, Comrade Panyanza Lesufi, and to all our MEC present. We further extend our thanks to the program organizers, Media House, CEFs, EMS, NGOs, our security service, CPF, SUNY, Alama, Council, Educator for Humanity, PSA, uh, Jamutal, Alama, SA, our religious foundations, and to our guest speakers. Uh, we would extend our thanks to our region chairperson and MMC of Finance, Comrade Cello, Enoch, Dada Moreiro. Lastly, thank you to all our participants and to the community at large. If we have missed anyone out, our humble apologies and a huge thank you to all of you. Please note, we have 84 days remaining for our national elections. May we all come out in numbers to vote for the ANC. Amandla, safe traveling to all back home, and God bless you.